Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And the next expansion of World of Warcraft post Dragonflight, The War Within, should hopefully be getting its first alpha sometime soon. Set to launch after the patch 1026, which is likely happening in March or April, based on the content map update. And the expansion brings plenty of new features to World of Warcraft, with things like a brand new allied race, four new zones for us to explore, hero talents, end game delves, old friendly warbands, and so many other features that got a lot of players in the community quite excited for. But the expansion will also expand on what we gained in Dragonflight as they get to refine one of the evergreen dynamic flight systems with more mounds being added to the Traversal family. And the expansion plans to build on some of the other features going forward to grow that evergreen garden of additions. In today's video, I wanted to highlight five of the best features that came with Dragonflight expansion, how I hope these features remain in the War Within, and more importantly, what improvements should appear in the next expansion to make sure they get to grow that list of evergreen success stories going forward. But right before that, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight, Patch 10 to 6, Season 4, or The War Within, or any of the future updates going forward. One of the best parts of Dragonflight has to be the entire revamp to their crafting system, as well as its connected work order system. First of all, I've never found crafting in World of Warcraft to be super compelling. In previous expansions, I might mess around with a profession or two, but I've never decided to go all in and really invest into one up until Dragonflight. And since the expansion, professions start to feel like they have a much better progression system. Crafting items and gaining talent points to invest back into various skill trees to make crafting rare items a little bit easier, improving your efficiency with materials used in these crafts, and even gain inspiration to take some of your crafted items to a whole nother level. Whether we're talking about gathering professions or production professions, both of them so far have felt great to interact with. Being able to spec into herbalism on my druid and then being able to work towards a mounted gathering actually felt awesome early on. And as you get better at a profession, you will gain other conveniences to make it feel like you're slowly mastering that profession over time. Add the work order system on top of it, and now we have plenty of use from professions even if you don't spec into leatherworking or blacksmithing directly. Guilds can now pull their resources together to craft items for one another, and you can find random players in Valdraken that can now get work and even make gold based on the proficiency of each craft. And the items you can craft through professions has a lot more granularity and control behind it. You can control various parts of a crafted item, from its secondary stats to its item level, additional bonuses in forms of embellishments, and so on. Crafting can also be a great source of high quality gear gains to help you fill out your item levels and armor slots with competitive end game items, while also removing the aspect of RNG that is commonly found in group activities such as raids and dungeons. Overall, I have to say I've been a big fan of the crafting revamp changes throughout Dragonflight, and I very much hope that War Within will continue to improve on the system further by making it more accessible and easier to get into for newer players, but I also hope they keep some of those bad luck protection that we currently have when it comes to crafted items to make it a worthwhile pickup towards the start of an expansion. Another feature worth highlighting in this video is the Dragonflight's upgrade system, which was initially introduced during the patch 10.1, which has been a pretty big gain when it comes to character progression. While a little confusing at first with players having to now manage a few different resources, such as flight stones as well as crests, after a bit of time most players did get used to this new system, and many have found benefit from its addition. Flight stones are easily earned from all forms of open world activities, and group content such as raids and dungeons, player vs player content, but also a variety of side activities like finding treasures out in the open world. Crests are earned from various parts of end game content, and are awarded depending on the content's difficulty. Crests and flight stones can then be used to upgrade gear rewards to higher levels, while awarding players diving into some of the more difficult content with a gear that has some of the higher upgrade ceilings. This allows players to bring normal raid gear into heroic equivalents or heroic gear into mythic equivalents and take some of the highest tier mythic items to their maximum item level with multiple different avenues of source of progression. 
overall, this system has been a great addition, and I feel like it is a system that will likely be maintained going forward in the War Within. But if I were to offer any future improvements, then I'd love to be able to purchase certain PvE items from a vendor using crests and flystones. Before crests and flystones, we had a familiar Valor based system when it comes to PvE content. And in the past expansions, Valor was awarded for participating in a variety of PvE group activities and was used as bad luck protection mechanic, allowing players to be able to buy certain quality items from a Valor vendor. Let's say, for example, you raid for three weeks in a row and you just get simply unlucky with some of the boss drops or you roll poorly and just can't get some of those upgrades no matter what you do. At the worst, you are still awarded for the effort and time within those activities and can now go spend that collected valor from those activities to buy upgrades from a vendor. Eventually, I'd love to see that type of system return in the future by allowing us to purchase certain PvE items from a vendor using flystones and crests. It'll be a huge benefit to some of the classes looking for the best in slot items, as well as trinkets and even weapons with unique effects, which are integral to some of the classes when it comes to their end game progression. And also it will be a much, much better alternative than having to run Galarkan's Fall Dungeon 40, 50, 60 times in a row until you finally get the weapon with the time strike effect on it. I'm also a big fan of Dragonflight's open world activities that they continue to add on to with every single update. Especially early into the expansion, it was awesome seeing just armies of players assaulting the Dragonbane Keep, with players crowding together around a cauldron helping out with the Tuscar feasts, or flying all over the place throughout the aisles hunting down beasts for the Maruk Centaur hunt. And what they've been able to do with more open world content since has also been great in terms of time rifts, the Forbidden Reach, the Super Blooms and the Emerald Dream, the Dream Surges and other activities that they've added over the last few updates. And what they've been able to accomplish in Dragonflight is to make the open world feel alive and I think that is the core to World of Warcraft. Having the open world crawling with players participating in a variety of different activities feels much better than an empty landscape where there's nobody around for miles. And I hope to see more of that type of player activity going forward. The open world is getting more love with the war within, especially with some of its delves and end game system, which is hoping to add open world as part of the end game activities that allow you to get fairly competitive gear even from the Great Vault. With them training the open world activities in the war within as a fourth leg of end game progression, I think it only spells good things when it comes to breathing life into the space found outside of dungeons and raids. I also have been a big fan of the Dragonflight's consistent little updates and content changes with every single patch and update. Specifically, I'm talking about the 0.5 and the 0.7 patches that we've seen so far. Like in the 10.07 when they added the Zakira Vaults and the Forbidden Reach, with some of the catch-up mechanics to set you up for the next season, or the catch-up gear that was added with the Emerald Dream or the Dream Surges, as well as Druid customizations for an update, Warlock Demon customizations for the patch 10.25, or even some of the old Naxxramas and even the old old Scarlet Crusade instances that you can now farm for various cosmetics. Overall, I'd say they've done a great job with the, some of the smaller updates that followed every single major content edition of Dragonflight, and hopefully we'll continue to receive more of those types of updates and smaller additions over time with the War Within. Another feature of Dragonflight I've enjoyed so far is the overall class talent revamp taking the condensed version of Mr. Pandaria talents and expanding them into entire talent trees to replace the need for borrowed powers for this expansion. By no means was it a perfect system, especially in its launch, but as each new iteration and as every single class starts to see a little bit of revamp here and there, the talent system itself has become much much better than where it initially started during the alpha of Dragonflight. As old talents and some of the older design is being replaced with newer ideas, new gameplay mechanics, new options for classes to interact with end game content, it overall has been good to see as they continue to refine some of the more problematic talent trees and certain class specs that probably could have used a refresher a while ago. It's also been really good to see that certain talents which are core to specific playstyles have then eventually been moved from the talent tree into the baseline abilities learned for that class replaced with other talents to create actual choices as you head further down into the talent tree. And I certainly hope they continue to revamp classes as we get closer to the War Within, which is introducing hero talents to further add additional depth to each playstyle, 
promoting certain talents over others to create a couple of new synergies for each class spec to play into with basically two subspecs available for every single playstyle, which I think on paper at the very bare minimum sounds like a good idea and should work out pretty well as it simply expands on what we've been able to establish in Dragonflight and then we take it to a next level heading into the next expansion while keeping the talent system something that players can choose and switch out of anytime they want to. So it is very, very frictionless of a system that allows the customization, that allows the choice, that allows players to experiment without necessarily punishing them with some of the old school bard power systems which locked you into very specific play styles. But I really do want to reinforce the idea that I do hope we get to see more revamps as time goes on. Just because we are basically towards the end of Dragonflight with a patch 10 to 6 as well as season 4 and then 10 to 7, hopefully we'll continue to see more revamps at least within the War Within. Not every single class pick is in a perfect spot. There's been a lot of community feedback when it comes to talents, when it comes to ideas of some of the things we want to see from our classes going forward. So hopefully they'll continue to revamp and reiterate on some of the ideas that we've been able to build on because it seems like with every single revamp and reiteration and a talent adjustment, we've been seeing progression. We've been seeing better versions of these classes and hopefully we'll continue seeing a better version of them heading all the way into the alpha, the beta and the release of the war within but that's going to make the full list of some of the features of dragonflight that i do hope get carried over into the next expansion and get most importantly improved upon as we head into the alpha and the beta if you guys have a list of your own features that you hope get carried over or even better yet a list of features that you hope get left behind the dragonflight and don't make it over into the war within let me know your thoughts in the comments below as per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.